Hello everyone, Jeff here. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we'll talk about beginner tips. Uh, so I wanted to share, uh, well, what I've learned along the way, basically, with you. Um, because I think there's a lot of beginners, probably, who watch my channel, people who want to get into whittling or carving. Uh, so I felt like, uh, yeah, showing you a couple of things. Um, we'll go around like, you know, what do you need to start carving? grain the wood and then how to hold the knife the basic cuts that you need to master to carve and then at the end we'll do a little face pretty much the face i always do for my little guys super beginner friendly i think everyone can carve like this if you have a knife and a piece of wood you can probably carve the little face uh, that i will show at the end so yeah not much more talking i guess and uh, let's get to it so the bare minimum that you need to carve is two things, uh, knives and wood, and you're good to go. Uh, I started carving with FlexCut. I love these knives. They are really good, uh, really well crafted knives to start carving. Uh, but then I switched to uh, Sergei uh, Belov knife, uh, this Russian carver. These are amazing. Uh, but you just basically need a sharp knife to start carving. I carved a couple of things with uh, this Bing Mora also. Um, and it, it works fine, right? You just need a sharp knife. Uh, like people say, sharp knife is a safe knife uh, because uh, you need way less strength to uh, basically carve uh, the wood and uh, for the wood part um, basswood is pretty much renowned to be the best carving whittling wood because of its softness and its grain and it's really uh, easy to carve I have here a piece of uh, alder this is also good um, it splinters more and it's a bit harder so if you can't get basswood alder is also good at least in my own honest opinion um yeah basswood is the name in uh, north america in europe it's limewood and here in sweden it's lind it's the same uh so that's the two things you need to start carving if you're interested and that's a hobby that you want to go on uh, with i think that obviously you should start with that also it's like you can obviously carve without a pair of carving gloves but it's dangerous. Uh, I've seen so many people posting on Instagram and on Reddit that they've cut themselves. I've cut myself too. Um, there's many different type of gloves. Uh, I bought these recently. I had uh, another pair like these guys. They were uh, not exactly, they were not as good, uh, I would say. Uh, than these guys, cut resistant, and these, you've probably seen a lot of people using these gloves. Uh, they are uh, also pretty good, it's just a bit, I don't know, it feels a bit weird to have these, they're big, and uh, they always like here, in this part, I don't know why, but this is why they break most of the time, and it's super easy to cut yourself here, so... Uh, but yeah, recently I've been using these, uh, as you can see, they have experience uh, where I use my knife the most. Um, they're really good. I would wear them now. They are cut resistant, they are not stab resistant, so it's really good if you if you cut, you the, the glove will mostly uh, absorb the thing, but if you stab yourself, that well, the glove will not change anything. So that's uh, the thing I would say that you should, along the knife and the piece of wood, have, uh, especially as a beginner. Like, there's a lot of people who don't use glove anymore when they carve because they're so experienced. Um, I will probably still use gloves after many years, um, just because. Yeah, I don't. Cut, I don't like cutting myself, <laughs> even like. If I'm comfortable, sometimes you slip, sometimes the wood decide to break or anything. Um, so that, I would say the three bare minimum thing you should have. Uh, and then after that, um, if you love this hobby, uh, a strop. Uh, I made one myself following the really nice video that Doug Linker has created to make a strop and how to use it. Um, this is 
really important to have because you can start carving with a knife that you bought at the store uh, but the blade will get dull at some point and then you kind of then it gets dangerous so it's good to have a strop uh, when I bought my flex cut set it came with a compound so this is another piece that is super important to have and I would say uh, you shouldn't have a pencil just to make sure that you can uh, draw little lines on your carving. Another little piece of uh, thing that you can have uh, that comes in handy is a brush, shoe brush, whatever. Uh, that's This one is really cool because there's the softer one and the harder one. Uh, it's really good to remove a little splinter in your uh, intricate part on a cut. Uh, all the little cuts that I've done, you can just swipe it off. If you watch my videos before, you can see uh, that I use that quite often just to make sure that yeah it just it, it just removes all the little tricky part that you might not want especially if you go uh, painting after uh, you want to have the least amount of uh, little annoying parts what would 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 the most important thing is to know where the grain is facing uh, or the direction of the grain I have two pieces of wood here. Uh, depending on the wood, you can see, like the grain of alder is really good, so you can really see the lines, right, of where it's facing, the direction of the wood. Here it's fairly straightforward too, you can see that it's here. But basically you don't want to carve, like, in that direction. You always want to carve with the grain. Um, so I will take, I will keep this part uh, and I will take a piece of bass. So there's the direction you need to be aware of. Uh, it took me a lot of time. I, I made all the mistakes at some point. Uh, we all make it, I guess. You just want to carve and then you start carving and you realize that you're carving like against the grain. It's not impossible. It was just a split and that's probably not super good. If you go with the grain, that's obviously really easy to make a cut. If you go against the grain, you can see that it's way harder. It's it's durable because my knife is really sharp, but uh, yeah, it's against the grain is kind of bad. Also, the grain you you can see here it splinters um, because I'm I'm with the grain, but I'm against it. Uh, depending on the direction of the grain. So if I carve a bigger spot, it splinters. But if I would carve in that direction, it's way smoother. So you, you, you will just need to have a feel for it. Um, it's really easy. Uh, if you carve something, at some point you will be like, see, I'm, I'm with the grain, so that's fine. But if I go on the other side, it splits right here. So, um, yeah, there's not really any tricks. You will just, the more you carve, you will feel it when you go in and you're like, oh, that will split. That will, that will split, so and then you go on the other side instead. So there's that for the grain. Uh, knots, big mistakes that I think probably everybody do. Uh, at least I've seen a lot of people talking and writing about it on the web. Uh, don't carve knots. It's not that it's not possible, but if you have a piece of wood and then you see these knots, uh, well, just, just don't carve that piece. Uh, this is really bad for your blade. The wood around this part you can probably see, but the grain is going all the way around. So there's not really a direction here. So the moment you will carve in there, that will, uh, it will be bad. Sometimes you can go around and carve uh, with the knot and maybe make something cool out of it, but uh, it's, um, yeah. I would advise to just not use that piece of wood and take another one. Holding a knife is obviously really important, um, depending if you're right-handed or left-handed. I'm right-handed, so I'm holding the knife, good grip, like this. Uh, when I carve, uh, you don't use your the hand holding the knife uh, to put a lot of strength. Uh, that's the best way to uh, do something you don't want, lose control, cut yourself, or anything like this. You should uh, use the thumb of your offhand to push the knife. 
he, my my thumb is making all the all the work here. So when I reach the end, I will not go uh, really far because my thumb can cannot go at, like super far, right? So uh, that's really simple and safe cutting way. Um, if uh, I do that sometime when I want to remove a lot of wood, I just change the grip and I hold the knife like this instead. And I can still push, but I can remove, I don't know, it's easier for me to remove lots of wood. And once again, the thumb is making all the work here. There's also the cut the wood yourself. Uh, it's for me, it's the least comfortable one, but uh, it's basically cutting like this. So uh, once again, you can't go super far because that's the range of motion of your fingers, right? So uh, depending, you can put your thumb up and cut towards hit like this, or you can put your thumb uh, under it and then you can't go too far. So that's basically the two way of two half three ways of holding the knife for me, uh, and then you can uh, do all the cuts uh, that you want like that. There's uh, another way of holding the knife, which is basically how you hold a pencil. Uh, if you want to do really small detail with the tip of your knife, basically, if I want to do uh, I don't know a little eye. And then you you just basically use the tip of your knife like you would use a pencil. And then you can uh, do little things with it and color. So yeah, there's that. Uh, it's really really important because I've done it myself. Uh, I have this flex cut here. Uh, as you can see, the tip is broken. So never shovel the wood. Uh, I think, yeah, lots of mistakes that people do. I've done the same thing with my Mora. The tip is also broken a little bit um, because I was trying to shovel uh, wood out. And yeah, you will just, even if it's made out of steel, uh, the tip is obviously fragile. So uh, when you cut, don't try to take the tip and then pull the wood up. Uh, that's it's really bad. Basic cuts. Uh, there's a couple of them that you should master. Uh, either practice them or just do like me and um, master them while carving. The first one, which is probably the most common, is the stop cut. Uh, so you uh, basically go perpendicular to uh, the wood. And then you make a cut in it, like so. And then you carve through it. And then your knife will stop at the cut. There you go. So that creates an edge, like this. So that's the stop cut. You can do another one here. It's really good to make notes. Um, really, really nice for that. Okay, so there's the sweeping cut, which is basically uh, you carve in a sweeping motion. So you kind of go deep and then you rotate your blade Hop. with your wrist. There you go. So that make a, a sweep. Simple as that. There's the V cut. The V-cut is uh, one of the most used one also. So you basically carve and you take your knife at 45 degree angle. And then where you see the blade ends, you go on the other side with another 45 degree angle. And then you remove the wood. I'm just making it deeper. Good, so there you go. That's the V-cut. Also used really, really often for a lot of different cuts. 
There's the pyramid cut or the triangle cut. Uh, this is probably the trickiest one, but it's really useful for eyes and uh, other uh, little things like that. So what you want to do is go in an angle, 45 probably, or something like this, in the wood, like that. Then you go at another angle like this. And then the same thing there. And then you can probably clean it. I should have made it, made it a bit bigger. There you go. So it creates a little, uh, little triangle pyramid in there. I still struggle with this cut, to be perfectly honest with you. It's uh, knowing the tip of the blade where it is. Uh, so that's 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 what it is. Um, also pretty common. And then there's the kind of like this, uh, what I call the follow cut. But basically, if you want to write a letter, let's say I want to write the letter T like this. Um, I basically hold my knife like that. You can also uh, maybe even uh, use it as a pencil like this. And I do a little cut at the end. Okay. And then at a 45 degree angle like the V cut, I go in. I'm against the grain here. Then I go on the other side. There you go. And then I could do the same thing here with the crane, that will be easier. Basically the line, the pencil line is the middle. There you go. We've got the letter T. So that's the all the cuts. Uh, basically, as simple as that. And then for the last part, uh, yeah, let's carve a really easy little face uh, with a couple of cut that we've talked today. Um, so the thing I always start with is the nose. Um, and then how do you do a nose? You do a stop cut like that. And then you carve through it. So that will basically generate the bottom of the nose. Remove more of it. So we have the bottom of the nose. And then uh, I will do another stop cut above. And I will also carve through it. Like so. So here you have the nose. Here. Um, I will do what I do after is that I go along with the knife like this on both sides. Okay. Basically create the eyebrow. Uh, so from here, I go with my knife on the side of the nose. Don't go too deep. Both sides. Like that. Okay. Then from where the nose end here or start, I don't know. I uh, put the tip of my knife inside. You don't want to go deeper, so make sure that the tip of your knife follow this little line here. And then I push all the way to the stop cut that I've done here. Then you remove the wood, and then you clean it. All right, like this. So that would be an eye here, a nose. And then from the other part, uh, depending on your, if you're right-handed or left-handed, but there's one part that you will have to switch your uh, holding. Then I do the same thing. Okay. Let's 
it's okay if you don't go with uh, one clean cut. Uh, I'm taking my time just to show you, so there we go. Okay, so we have both eye socket and the so we have the nose here. So what I do from here normally is I remove the corners of the nose, like so, in a 45-ish degree angle. Trying as much as I can to be symmetrical, like this. I remove another corner here at the top. Good. Here, at an angle again, I go alongside the nose. Same thing here. Okay. Remove the pointiness of the nose like that. Okay. So we have a big nose now. Could uh, remove a little bit of wood here to flatten the forehead. And then I will, uh, depending on where you are in a piece of wood, um, I will just remove, flatten that part too for the mount. Okay. Just clean it a little bit. Okay. And then from here, I uh, usually go for the cheek because as you've seen my videos before, probably, uh, my guys all have, always have a big beard. So perpendicular to the line that I've cut here for the little nose, I just put a line here. And then same thing on the other side. Normally is the same distance. Then following along here, all the way to there, like so. Try to have a same, most okay. And then, like we've done for the letter T, uh, you can go along, but for these two, I prefer to start with a V cut. So I go in a forty-five degree angle. And then I go on the other side and I remove. Same thing here. Remember that the pencil line is the middle, like so. And then here I will do the what I call the follow cut. So put my knife in an angle, go in, and then I go from the other side. Oh, that would be a big G. Then I remove this little wood. And then from here, I can do another V cut. There we go. Just cleaning it a bit. So we have one cheek. So then we repeat the same thing on this side. Here, since I'm on the other side, I change the, how I hold the knife. Put my knife in, follow along. Little stop cut at the end. And I put my knife again and follow along. Then you just pop that wood out. Okay. And same thing here. 45. So we got the cheeks with the nose. So for the mouth, I uh, always do the same thing. I do a 45 degree angle, sort of, under the nose. 
and then another one for like a 90 degree and then I go along and I cut through it and then I cut through it again here there we go so we got a little face I won't go farther than that that's basically what I wanted to show you um, couple of cuts um, we haven't done the swipe cut but we've done pretty much all of the other uh, like this ending here is a little bit of a pyramid cut here on the side of the cheek uh, lots of stop cut V cuts a lot of them and uh, we got a little uh, gooba face so I hope you learned a thing or two uh, I went through pretty much probably everything that I've learned through the last year of whittling and carving little dudes so yeah I hope you enjoyed uh, if you have questions as usual or anything leave a comment I answer all of them press like if you feel like it and uh, we will see each other hopefully next week bye bye